live. <clears throat> Try to do sound check at some point, but I, I'll we'll do it in post. Fuck it, we're doing it live. Is that how that starts? Is the microphone? Fuck it, on? fuck it, we're doing it live. <laughs> yes. No, no, fuck it, we're doing it live. <laughs> All right. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm assuming the volume is set right. It looks good. Check one. Hey, let us check. Our sound check is you checking our sound. <laughs> check, check, check. One, two, three. Welcome to How They Got Hacked, episode 35. We're all sweating a little, not because it's hot, but because we need hot sauce. <laughs> hot freaking sauce. Hot freaking sauce. Yeah. Dying. Dying. It was mm. pretty bad. I had some hot sauce today, guys. That's yes. why we're late. So we're late. There was things that had to be done. Hot sauce that had to be had. Had to be had. <laughs> had to be had. had so this is had. How They Got Hacked, episode 35. 35. 35. Tom Lawrence. Xavier D. Johnson. Maurice Nash. Yep. And we are here to talk about how they got hacked. And my yes. wife says, are you doing how they got hacked? Yes. <laughs> yes. We are doing how they got hacked. So I sent her a copy of the live stream. Apparently, we didn't go live in time for my wife to be, you know, believe that's what we actually do here. Like, I mean, we eat spicy foods. We drink whiskey. Talk about beer. Yes. Talked too. about Cybertruck for way too long. Yeah. Lots of Cybertruck. <laughs> Sometimes we get carried away. Lots yeah. of Cybertruck. Yeah. You know, because whether you love it or hate it, one thing I'll say, everyone's talking about it. Because you know what we're not talking about? Last week, some other car company mislabeled a Mustang or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's like the most controversial thing they could do is come up with, we'll put a badge on it. That'll get people upset and talking about it. Yikes. Yeah. They should just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let Tesla do their thing. You know, and my thing is, it, it's just crazy that... Like, people who go, oh, it's too extreme for the mainstream. I'm like, Elon doesn't have the facilities, even in his wildest dreams, to produce the volume of cars. Like, the Ford F-150, they sell, like, a million of them. Mm -hmm. He can't produce a million Cybertrucks. I don't care how much money. The guy's a billionaire, but that takes infrastructure, supply chain. It's not for everybody. It's for people who go, hey, you know what I want? The Something that doesn't look like every <laughs> fucking thing else. <laughs> anybody who's even going to say Cybertruck. Yeah. And it's a pickup truck, and we already know how pickup trucks truck people are and i know like some of our viewers are pickup truck people so like i'm not saying anything i mean but but it's... they're types right like we all know the pickup truck type mm -hmm. would you really call it a pickup truck it's more like a convertible hatch no <laughs> no that's a pickup truck it's and that's and that's the whole point we're all are even we like it and don't agree well, i don't know if xavier likes his styling as much he said but still like it's still I'm not a brutalist. controversial talking about a brutalist. it. Brutalist. Yeah, it, it's it, brutalist. it follows that brutalist architecture. Brutalist, You're not yeah. wrong. Yeah, like like I I know time speed. Tom would live in Utah if it wasn't full of scary people, <laughs> and like you know I have one of those like you know like like sleek houses that's like all one level made out of like glass and like. Have the, mm -hmm. you know, oh, scion, yeah. he used to I have a scion. That. Do you know like the box? I he love had that. two of those. <laughs> he had two scions, all right? Mm -hmm. I see this for Tom and Tom's people. Hey, all I know is right here, man. <laughs> you know, here's Elon Younger. He makes some cool stuff. He goes on Joe Rogan, smokes a blunt. Done. And I couldn't help it. My tweet says, see, we know where he got this the is this blunt is... architecture from. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That is certainly riot architecture. It looks like a moon rover. It looks I will like take it. It looks like the vehicle from one of my favorite childhood movies, which is Total Recall. It does. It so does. I will be buying it. I will be holding off on the... <gasps> and look at the bright side. Ass. You can just drive it directly through buildings. Hell yeah. All right? Like smash and grab <laughs> to the next level. Yes. Exactly. So nonetheless, that's... Uh, it, actually, one of my friends who owns a tech company, he, mm. he are two of them. I... He's he's buying them for his fleet. He wants to see. He wants to con. He's contacted Tesla. He goes, I want that trailer because he's he does an infrastructure company. He goes, I want those trailers with it too. Yes. How much? <laughs> Very nice. Ah, uh, hell yeah, yeah. Elon's a sci-fi fan, so there's undoubtedly all kinds of places where that uh, came from. Good old sci-fi. Yep. Yo, Grayson, you got to chill. What Grayson talking about? <laughs> I think Grayson watches Wally -E every week. Why oh, you say that? Because <laughs> he always says he watch Wally -E, Wall -E <laughs> every week. <clears throat> well, he likes Wally. -E. Let him have his yeah. thing. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got their thing. No kink shaming, all right? <laughs> Dude, you never yuck on someone's yum. That's right. what you want. No, I like Wally. <laughs> I just, it's just funny that he always says that. I like you that never movie. Yuck no, that was a good yum. movie. I mm -hmm. almost cried watching Wally. 
Isn't that Disney? Yeah. Exactly. Dude, everything. That. National Geographic's Disney. Everything's fucking Disney. Yeah. They own everything. It Make happens sure. that way. They're just a company built on lawyers. All started with a mouse. You got Disney Plus? Yeah. You got Disney Plus? No. <clears throat> I don't. My wife probably uses someone say. else's Disney Plus. Well, a lot of people have someone else's Disney Plus. We've all seen Erica on that. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually Xavier. Don't you have a truck? <clears throat> yes, I have a truck, but my truck is actually a station wagon. This is a pickup truck. No self. I know you have a pickup truck, <laughs> and you are also a lineman. Like you touch high voltage stuff, like scary, <laughs> <laughs> like high utility, like big truck, like you know, you know what I mean. Like uh, <laughs> it doesn't fit the typical Tesla thing. It doesn't look like the kind of person that's going to jump out of this Tesla pickup truck. Yeah. It's the same person that's got the Ram 1500, or better yeah. yet, the 2500 HD with the Cummins, with the smokestacks coming out the back. Like, this ain't that dude. And that's typically, you know, mm -hmm. the pickup truck dude. Because it's like, yo, like, you drive a pickup truck for a <laughs> reason. Either it's for service. Right. Or it's because you want a big truck where you can haul shit and, like, right. you know. <laughs> I can't wait to see the lift. It's already 16 inch clearance, so like yeah. the lift is going to be what 20 inch. I know. Throw a four inch lift, lift on, on it, it's going to be nuts. Do you need a four inch lift? No. Do you ever need? <laughs> okay, it's true. <laughs> do you ever need yes. the lift? Well, of course, look at my neighbor's neighbor. Truck. Look at my fucking neighbor's <laughs> truck. You're right. You're it shows right. up as a semi truck <laughs> <laughs> on the on the radar for your Tesla. Yeah, I think I took a picture the other day because it was covered in snow. I was laughing. Uh, Notice how no stuff says it's a. TRD off road, by the way. It's not just a Tacoma. It's like top of the mook. For those of you that are new here, <laughs> it's my neighbor's truck. So, yeah, I don't know oh how big God. that fucking lift is, but that. I can fit, I can walk <clears throat> underneath this truck. So, I would be mad that he's parked where I can't see when I back out, but I can look under his truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I laughed the other day. I was like, I can still see if cars are coming because I can look under his fucking truck. <laughs> Yeah. Cracks me up when I see any parks in the street. So that's what I'm saying. Like, that guy's not going to go get the Tesla truck. Oh, I don't know. He's actually, he loves my Tesla. He's a car, he's a car and dude, you think he builds that some shit. You think that Elon's going to turn, turn the monster truck guys into Tesla owners? <laughs> I don't know. Because he, he wants to, dude, this guy's got, he's got a um, 16 or 18 foot high garage doors. He's got a garage taller than my house, behind his house. Just got, for his truck. Well, no, he's got lifts. <laughs> he's got lifts in there. That's what he does. He custom builds oh, hot rods wow. for people. There's yeah. the craziest cars. Could you imagine? You know imagine? what he was doing at 2 a.m. last night? My wife was so angry. Gr angle grinding? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Open headers. I hear it. Oh, oh, even bah, worse. Wong, wong. They're just, and he's got it on the lift, and it's in his backyard, which is across the street, and it's, it's just coming over. Why would he do that? Because he's fucking crazy. If you meet him, you don't question why he does things at like that. At 3 a.m., though? <laughs> All the time. Dude, the guy is wrenching. He lives in his garage. He's always Open coming headers? Over. Pop, pop, pop. You just hear him popping and spitting. He's tuning an engine. I mean, he just, you know. That's, just, that's like when he decided to do it. Start with the babies once a day. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you how me and Blood be having a talk. Excuse me. Listen. 3 p.m. is different than 3 a.m. Yeah. Dude, my neighbor's nuts. I I'm mean, look at the too. truck he drives. <laughs> look at the truck I drive. We Someone says, crazy. how far is he driving all the time? I'm like, yeah, from gas station to gas station. Man. Right, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a point to point for sure. Ah. <laughs> uh, anyways. What are we, where are we at here? Tomorrowland. Finally caught a stream. What's up from Philly? Awesome. Yo. What's up, Philly? What up, Philly? I know what's up. You better get your next cloud update. Oh, yes. boy. <laughs> you know what we were just talking about this? I was talking about it last week. Exactly. Because of the flaw that was in most of these systems, including like one of them that's sitting behind me. Um, everyone wants to run it in a, you know, in a jail, in a Docker container, because it's complicated to set up, so they don't want to run it in raw Linux, but then you have to rely on whoever maintains that package, including the FreeNAS one, which I'm not clear has a, uh, this vulnerability updated. To my knowledge, it doesn't. Until someone proves me otherwise, I'm going to assume it doesn't. <laughs> That's on me. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but what you have here is the PHP form, the Nginx flaw, is causing someone to exploit this because, well, everyone's running it and just exposes it. And yep. uh, by the way, there's no, no, nothing on uh, Virus Total or anything that can find this malware right ouch, now. Ouch, ouch, yeah. baby. And they are pwning Nextcloud. You've been, you hacked. Have been hacked. And they're swapping and encrypting. And they're only charging a few hundred bucks for your data. So they're actually pretty reasonable hackers. But they know most home users are using this. That's who they're, so they want to get paid. So, you know, they made it cheap. Oh, they made it real cheap. <laughs> 
Yeah. And Nextcloud says oh it's boy. not a flaw in Nextcloud. Nextcloud <laughs> told Bleeping Computer. Next yes, we believe that all these are being exploited by PHP form. And you can do a you know really basic search over on Shodan, find people running Nextcloud with Nginx exposed, and probably they're running it in a some type of Docker container system that no one's pressing update on. <laughs> and there's no auto updates because it's not running raw on Linux where you can update Nginx. So you're waiting on package maintainers, and now you're getting pwned and owned. So Mind you, this is the fastest <clears throat> way to run PHP, so not only Nextcloud is falling victim to this, uh, yeah. there are going to be other applications oh, yeah. out there that are running PHP. PHP uh, There's probably a lot of them out there, it's just Nextcloud is being a more popular one, yeah. and like I said, is this a request? I mean, I look at how many views I have because I, I did it at the request of a few people, like, hey, can you do a free NAS, how to set up a container, well, a free BSD jail? I said, and I preempt the video with this, this is how you set it up, this is not how you secure it, <laughs> because if the if there's any flaw in any of these packages, you have to wait for the package maintainer. And FreeNAS isn't the package maintainer. Mm -hmm. The way the jails work in like a FreeNAS server is they let, FreeNAS is the company that uh, does the NAS software, but the jail system, the container and plugins are all third party open source maintained. Mm -hmm. So you are waiting on the individual or group of individuals that maintain those particular packages to get around updating it. Yeah, that's a problem. If it's, it's Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> if you were just a guy that was trying to get his job done, or gal, or it, or thing, right. or whatever, that was just trying to get your job done, and, you know, you went to the top thing, the top blog, that guy probably didn't go back and update his script. Right. right? Yeah. I've had this happen where I'm in an environment, and I pwn something, and I take it to a person. I'm like, look how I pwned you. And they're like, oh, well, I just followed this tutorial online and you go read the tutorial online and you're like it says nothing about setting credentials and then you go and read the actual script that this person is downloading the docker file that this person is downloading and running and it has hard-coded credentials that are like admin admin right or admin yeah. password so um take that same concept it's it's a little bit hard sometimes when you were just doing something or you had a consultant in and they were just doing something based on a google search and now it's just lost in translation. You don't even know that you have this in your environment and that it's potentially pwnable. Yeah, it, these are some, you know, pretty serious flaws. And speaking of that, this kind of directly relates to it. And uh, I don't oh, we didn't talk about this last week, did we? The uh, IPsec module inside. No, we did, couldn't have because it was under. I knew about it, but I couldn't disclose mm -hmm. myself. I couldn't tweet about it until then. Um, <clears throat> there's a vulnerability in the IPsec module in Unbound. Now, this is... Not IPsec as in the VPN, but I, the way IPsec works with DNS. So this is a very specific use case, but very unique idea here. And Xavier, if you haven't read this, this is this is going to be an interesting uh, vector. So due to unsanitized characters passed in the IPsec mod hook shell command, it's possible for Unbound to allow shell code execution from a specially crafted IPsec key answer. Unbound was compiled. Had the conditions have to be met by Unbound compiled with enable IPsec mod. By the way. Uh, CentOS, Red Hat, Debian, they all by default, if you're running the Unbound DNS server, which most of them are, that's the default for a lot of systems, that does come pre-compiled with that feature enabled. Mm. Then someone has to uh, have a domain that's part of the IPsec mod whitelist. If you whitelist it, if you just allowed it to uh, go, it doesn't have to have that enabled, so to speak, but it has to be either enabled or willing to pull IPsec. And un an Unbound IPsec uh, receives a query for a domain that has a record that has an IPC, IPsec key record available. So you break this down a little bit differently. So IPsec uh, keys are a way to, and it's kind of a future thinking thing. There's very, not a lot of places using this, but what your DNS query does, you want to validate who owns this DNS record. Is it validated? Mm -hmm. So they have a kind of an extended, this is extended differently than DNSSEC. This is an IPsec key. So we have a key file that we can verify some validity and of who owns this DNS file. Now, why this matters? Well, it turns out if you put a well-crafted IPsec key in there, it will do shell code execution. Unbound doesn't necessarily, especially when you think about it from the firewall perspective, it's built in and bundled with a lot of firewalls that have Linux under the hood. So now you put the shell code in the IPsec key, you get access to the firewall and you take over. Even if it Unbound is not running at root privilege, 
you now have some level of control over DNS. And once you have DNS on the firewall, you can redirect people wherever you want. Yep. Root of all trust. Yeah. Also known as the root of all evil. <laughs> yeah. So this becomes a very interesting uh, attack because so many routers are going to have Unbound in there. Yep. Now, those of you know, I'm a uh, big fan of PFSense, and I did confirm with the dev team at PFSense that they're using... Um, they compile everything themselves, and when they compile it, they do not compile that feature on. Uh, for my initial was to, you can just pass the parameter to turn that off in PFSense, so that's what I did until I knew um, from them that it was okay, and they tweeted officially once the embargo was released on that knowledge uh, that, nope, we don't even use that feature, so completely not at risk. But this is the problem. A lot of these firewall companies, especially proprietary ones, they're still using Unbound under the hood. And they may require a license to even uh, get access to updates. So they're just going to remain unupdated because also people that aren't managing these aren't updating these. So oh, boy. This, this could be a long time before all these systems get patched. And by the way, this affects Unbound for a lot of versions. So only, I mean, it was only patched on the, like the 19th, three days ago. That's when the official patches were released. So... Um, I think this is going to be an edge case where we start seeing different botnets and things like that popping up because they find some domain that they can hijack that's commonly queried. And that's the best part. You don't even have to open it. It's just commonly queried domains because as long as it does the query, it can get shell and execution. So I don't know. I, maybe I'm reaching here. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's overstated, but I think it's still going to be one of those. Someone's going to find some clever I have domain. not dug into it yet, so I had to go do some, some research to really understand the... Uh, the full scope of this one. Yeah, of how easy it is to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you have to do is a, have a domain. People just have to click the link. They don't have to open attachments or nothing. Just click the link to have it resolved. That's it. And Unbound goes, I'm pwned. I'm execute shell command. So mm. it seems, I mean, it's got, an, I think, a 9.5 on the CV. So, I mean, they, they took it pretty serious because mm. it does, it's not arbitrary to get shell command. I just found it kind of interesting because it affects firewalls. And that's one of the... Uh, we've seen so many attacks against firewalls and botnets that are produced from them. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely um, definitely going to be interesting because nothing gets updated. That's that's actually, once you find these flaws, this shit just broke forever <laughs> until, <laughs> until it gets boned. Um, this is kind of a neat thing. This is where Microsoft's actually doing something good. Securing the world's software together. And this isn't about hacking as much as about stopping from getting hacked. So uh, GitHub Security Labs missions inspire and enable the community to secure open source software depend on what we do, empower users, blah, 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 CVEs found. More specifically, GitHub acquired um, a company that, I can't remember, uh, it's called uh, CodeQL. So CodeQL treats code as like a database. And with enough places using uh, GitHub with all the code on there being open source, you can find, there's a hacking side to this too. <laughs> the concept is, what if I knew a common programming mistake, a common phrase someone would use, a common line of code, so to speak, right. that someone uses that you know is flawed on a project? Well, mm -hmm. there's already people searching GitHub to find those. Mm -hmm. You're like, exec. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're doing it that way. This is in reverse. Once you find a common insecure code, this is going to start actively searching through GitHub to let people know uh, that there's a flaw in their system. Because mm. don't worry, the hackers are already looking for the flaw in oh, your system. This certainly. is kind of like, uh, what was that one we talked about two episodes ago that uh, that found all those open buckets and people dropping keys oh, and right. stuff like that. It's very similar, but they're going to be doing active search on there. So um, this is actually kind of a nice bonus that they're going to have a little bit of code searching on there uh, on your behalf. But uh, there's probably some other ways you could start digging into this and playing with it to find also things that you may find interesting on projects, Definitely. especially big projects that are in use, uh, looking at how the code is. So uh, that was kind of how that one came about. <clears throat> so once it finds the code, does it notify the author? Yes. Notifies authors, contacts them, and starts... Uh, I just makes, what, a comment or a that's the problem. GitHub so, issue? It just sends uh, yeah. you a message okay. and it opens up a so. GitHub issue. I think like it opens it. up a GitHub issue. I, I didn't get... there. It's kind of an announcement because it's pretty early um, early release, but it sounds like they're pushing the security a lot further. So does it stop the code from running or probably is it up to not. the author to It's up, probably up to, to the update author. It? Yeah. So what if the author never updates it? <laughs> Well, the author's pwned. <laughs> I mean, that's how that works, though. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so that's going to be interesting. Now, this has a couple different pieces to it, so I'm going to open up all the pieces because this is one of those. I think someone's been hacked, and we... There's one of those you connect the dots to uh, put this all together. 
So we're going to talk about the issue here. Now, I'm not going to get political on this, but I'm going to tell you that this is an official .gov website from the House Oversight Committee. And they're investigating a really interesting problem. Apparently, Jared, son-in-law of Trump, has been using WhatsApp quite a bit to talk to important officials. Hmm. And this is a whole oversight committee. Now, why why they... WhatsApp? Well, that's a good. That's a lot of the question. Why that's WhatsApp? That's a terrible platform of all the platforms. Because they think WhatsApp is so secure. But it's it not. It's owned by Facebook. Into yes. any encryption. But it's owned by Facebook. We know this. But if you're just they, a how user, do they not know this? Can they just can they just hire me? Well, that's the problem. This is one of the reasons a lot of these security advisors have been leaving because they're kind of. It's kind of like the same reason. As if your title is security officer. Your name's on the line. You're telling these assholes to do the right thing. When they don't do it, you go, I'm going to leave. Listen, because... <laughs> if I tell you to do the right thing and then you don't do it, I need more money. Right. So that when <laughs> so when she hits the fan, I'm just like, well, at least I got that, you know, yeah. that Aventador, though. Like, I'm about to go for a drive in my Aventador <laughs> right. and put 100 miles on it real quick. I'm feeling a little stressed out. Let me get out of my 17-bedroom mansion because, like, if I'm, <laughs> I'm working... I'm working as a consultant for the government, and I'm like, yo, don't use WhatsApp. And they're like, well, we're going to be using WhatsApp, and I'm going to, I'll be like. That's a bad idea, guys. It'd be a shame. How about, uh, how about we move this from six to seven figures? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, so, and these are the things that go on, and this is from Facebook. A, a stack buffer overflow could be triggered in WhatsApp sending specialty call, crafted MP4 file WhatsApp users. So it's a parsing mm -hmm. problem in the way it parses MP4s. Mm -hmm. What do we do on WhatsApp and things like that? We send the memes and we send the videos and the ha exactly. and, and And the reality is, uh, if you've ever met even politicians at higher levels of government, the fact of the matter is po uh, politicians are populists. They are not necessarily people of uh, technical aptitude. Exactly. And they're also, whether you believe it or not, um, just people at some point. You know what I mean? We put them as if they're some... It's like a celebrity. Just but when you meet time. some of them, you're like, oh, they're just kind of people. Honestly, Easier they're just kind of people. Fish. And fish, But fish, because they're people baby. and they're average people who don't think about the things that us three think about, they're they just start using WhatsApp. And fish. who are you going to talk to? The same person that's of high political stature that was my friend for another country and kind of do the same thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> so yeah, I think there's a relationship between this CVE, the fact that there's now a Senate investigation committee. I don't think that's a political move. I'm like, they're like, what's has been doing this? And it's probably been, someone's known about this longer than it's been disclosed. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. The WhatsApp hack. Oh, that's old. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Well, this is a new one. This is a new 2019. Oh, oh, they found another, it. Another. Right. Wow. Tomorrow what, will be the other one. And right. the day after will be the other Like every single week WhatsApp right. is pwned. It's, it's not bad. a good idea yeah. to a, use this. Not a good app. You might want to just like switch over to Keybase. Right. Like, yo, you want to talk to your cool, important friends? Okay, after you give me the seven-figure check, let's download Keybase. Yeah. And definitely. set up, you know, like exploding messages. Right. Right. <laughs> like this is just bad OPSEC here. So Purely bad OPSEC. And, and people who work for the government, con you know, conducting bad OPSEC. Yeah. Right. So this people is, who have a, a skiff and shit, like people who have like you know, yeah, 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 all so, the means to be operationally <laughs> secure. I have my messages set to explode in five minutes. You have five minutes to read my message. Yeah. I mean, this hidden. is one of the reasons I use Signal and things like that. And you know, even us, one of our uh, opsec internally is how mm. we internally, you know, everything we do is ephemeral on purpose when we have inter employee communications. Uh, about security. We had to set up some passwords today when I was at a client. I was on a job site. I had to have some stuff done by my team. We set up everything's like five minute password explode type mm -hmm. stuff. Like, cool. That way I can get the password, get it set, get it to the person. And then I suggested that they change it using their password manager. Right. So now, it, even if you were to get it in flight, it goes away, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. And this is just like good security hygiene practices. And here's people with real power. <laughs> you know, I did call them real people, but they also do have real power. Mm -hmm. There's the other side of this. And they're just using WhatsApp to talk about shit. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of scary. It is. Now, I've seen this teased a lot. Did you see this tease? This guy was tweeting. The leak. The biggest the leak big, of all time. Biggest leak of all time. 1.2 billion blah, blah, blah. people, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And it's kind of <laughs> disappointing. So... To me, I don't know. I have a different, maybe I have a different perspective on this. Personal and social information of 1.2 billion discovered in massive data leaks. So this is why I think, and then there was 4 billion user accounts, but there's really barely 4 billion people actually on the internet. So they did some differential, came down to 1.2 billion. But what they're doing is data enrichment. So this company that was uh, aggregating all this data was just collecting OSINT data. 
that was publicly available all over the place and compiling it into one super database. So is it, I mean, granted, yeah, probably a bad idea to have it in an Elasticsearch database that's publicly exposed. I mean, don't get me wrong, stupid happened over here. Like, I don't, we haven't had an episode yet. We're 35 episodes and every one of them has at least had one open Elasticsearch database at one point. Maybe episode one didn't. Uh, so we know this happens all the time because it's yeah, hard to I, configure. I don't know what's going on. If, how does Elasticsearch, they got to do better with their documentation at this point. This is starting no. to become a product flaw. The same way when S3 buckets were getting popped, you know what Amazon yeah. did? They made it so that you had to click a box to access it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, s- products are typically, product managers want to stay out the news for negative stuff. Like, yeah. I've heard more bad stuff about Elasticsearch than good stuff. And they don't, re- people don't realize that the E in Elk Stack is Elasticsearch. Right. So, like, <laughs> they're like, oh, the Elk Stack is amazing. But then you type in Elasticsearch and people are like, oh, hacked, 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 hacked. Mm-hmm. And I think they just make it too hard to put a password on it. I think that... It's the same reason you find stuff wide open in, in web directories all the time. People can't figure out, you know, setting the permissions right. So, schmod777 star, enter. <laughs> yeah, like, schmod. What's <laughs> up, Zach? So, yeah, I think there's a lot of that going on. That's what causes this. So, it's interesting. I mean, uh, it's called People Data Labs, uh, originating from... Yeah, it says, based on our analysis PDL. of the data, PDL indexes uh, originating from People Data well, Labs. It was more than one data company, aggregator. Right? Sounds like it. Um, At least three? There's been a couple times. Matter of fact, what was that one company? Um, I think they call themselves like VPN Hunter or something like that. They have a research team, and they have found a couple databases that were, once again, Elasticsearch open. And they actually had the question of, we don't know who this database belongs to. We found it, but Amazon won't tell us who it belongs to, and it we can't turn it off. Because it's just data flowing out of it. It's got this big collection of data, and we're like, who owns this? And Amazon's like, we can't reveal customers' names. And you it's can. nothing illegal. It's, it's the same thing. It was data it's aggregation. Nothing illegal. Yeah. It's nothing illegal. It's data aggregation again. So the data bandits at it again. Data bandits at it again. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, your data that you're putting out on the internet. Yeah, I'm so looking I'm at this, and I'm not saying anything that you can't already see. They yeah, just had it's it just an aggregate. Nice, neat Anytime that you get this kind of data in the aggregate, yeah. it allows for ripe targeting. And, and like right now, if you take that data set and type in hacker, I'm going to come up in it. You're going to come up in it. Yeah. That guy who wrote that article came up in it. Um, that allows you to be able to, okay, who do these hackers work for? Oh, I found that 17% of the hackers that I found work for, you know, FireEye. Okay, so, like, you know, what do I know about FireEye? How do I leverage this information so that I can massively fish people and potentially get FireEye to write me a $100 million check the same way I did Facebook and Google? You know, you get I'm, what I'm saying? I like f- that old that's that OSINT shit is so powerful. Yeah, I, I forget. You know, to you know, non technical people, this would probably seem like a firestorm. But since I look at this stuff, yeah, it's daily, just it's a it's a collection of open source intelligence data. It's kind of like I mean, it's interesting. So that, docs, fam. Yeah, at one place, it's definitely yeah. the docs. It's all the docs. It's definitely the docs. Yeah. And, and I've always talked about Family Tree now. That's that one's yeah. in, when that that play that's public. That has probably some of the most accurate information I found about people. I found so many people's cell phone numbers in there and things like that. I did a whole. I have a video that's yeah, about I, that. I, one. I did end up using. Tom uh, has a video on how to dox, how to take down <laughs> corporations using, <laughs> using Screen Connect. Yeah, oh, I did boy. use. Uh, I did use. Uh, YouTube has been popping up a little Family box. Tree now. Family I didn't tree now. use it for an engagement. Family Tree now. It, it did return some pretty I, accurate information. Yeah, I am shocked. It it has a few things that I'm puzzled how they acquired. It has my phone number from when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Li- related to my dad and I'm like dude that's weird like that phone number has been gone since the 90s when my dad moved away up north like but they haven't related to him that's some old data they got my grandpa's phone number and I'm like damn they got my grandpa's phone number like I remember the phone number of my kid when I dial it like it's accurate they have it that's I don't know what public database of course the yellow pages was public back then so I don't know interesting that's uh OSINT is awesome it's uh you can spend some time on petrifying. it petrifying petrifying sometimes that's why you always got to think about controlling the narrative. Search yourself, always. See, I have that cool Xavier Johnson name, so it's just like <laughs> basketball players, ESPN, and jail. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of the two. <clears throat> yeah. Now, we. this is uh, a fun time. The, the, the ship has set sail in Docker again. Again. It's Docker, escape the docks. It's... <laughs> 
Um, there's been a lot of these little problems, and it's a problem with containerization versus virtualization. Containerization, lightweight, awesome, fast, also security problems <laughs> uh, because you're sharing kernels. And uh, the last few years, several vulnerabilities well, in the copy the command were found. Doesn't work. Yeah, uh, copy of various commands to platforms, including Docker. Uh, so there are the most severe among those were only recently discovered and discovered in July. Surprisingly, it gained almost no immediate, excuse me, new immediate attention, perhaps due to an ambiguous CVE description and a lack of published exploit. You know, so you step that up over at Palo Alto and they uh, break down how you can break out of the Docker and break out of the containers and everything else. And it looks really really easy mm. it's using a series of cp commands i mean they're they're, they're using copy <laughs> I mean, which makes sense for a ch root mm -hmm. yeah sim link your way right out simulink your way out uh and it, it looks like their proof of concept here i mean it's 39 lines uh so yeah. am i reading that right um, it looks okay. easy it looks easy i mean i didn't actually attempt this but we can watch it in 37 seconds docker run oh boy this looks like, <laughs> hey, why not name it dot exploit? <laughs> the fix is so simple, too. Docker CV. Hmm. And, ooh, root. Ooh. There we go. So uh, the fix, which is really simple. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, lots of people running Docker stuff that won't do it. Uh, there was a few Docker updates. I didn't look at to why, but I know I had to apply them because I run my forums in Docker. Um, that is the only Docker I use. I'm not a Docker expert. But yeah, either way, that's definitely going to be how some people get hacked. That's uh, going to be high in the list there. Yes. Yes. Monero. The privacy, Monero, Monero. the privacy oriented <laughs> cryptocurrency official Monero site delivers malicious cash grabbing wallet. So, Whoops. what's in your wallet? Not, Not your money. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was a victim of the Monero hack. I lost all of my riches. Mm -hmm. I am now poor. Okay, this is how you get the IRS off your back. Like yeah, this. I lost it all in the Monero hat. You know, I, in <laughs> IRS, don't <laughs> <up> care. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, this is supply chain, you know what I mean? The militia, uh, so on November, on 18th of November, somebody swapped out the legitimate command line wallet binaries for the Monero, uh, cryptic user replaced them with software from stolen user funds. The malicious versions of Linux and Windows binaries first spotted by a user on Monday, not the Docker people, or not, right. not the Monero people, apparently. Whoops. User. Whoops. One of the users like, hey, this don't match. So, just imagine being this Bart Blaze guy and just every single release you just download it and like unpack it and reverse engineer it. Because, like, why else would he have been doing this? Like, this is something that he's often just doing. 35 minutes. 35 minutes of. Uh, That's not really long. No, it doesn't take long. So, how many people? Who done it? How done it? For how much? As of Wednesday, were a number of unanswered questions. Yep. Still, still unanswered Friday, as far as I can tell. It wasn't clear the techers pulled off the compromise of Monastate or how many users were affected, or nor the value of the crypto coins that were stolen. And, you know, the scarier hackers are the quiet ones. Like this WhatsApp hack, there's probably been some, you know, agency using and exploiting it, you know, uh, things there's like that. Agencies being quiet. using shit right now. All the time. You know, right now. it's funny hearing some of these hacks is like they, they don't want this stuff to get out. And, uh, so you don't know exactly. We don't Bad news, minutes, guys. But... There's another Intel side channel attack. I don't know the name of it yet, but it's coming out it's because definitely. that's the nature of our business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be another speculation attack, if not by the end of the year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Science. that's... That's the nature. It is the it's nature amazing. of it. I love it. Where did I... Oh, I forgot to save the other one in the news. I'll say there wasn't a ransomware attack in Louisiana this time. It was not exciting. Oh, they just yeah. didn't pay. Yeah. They just shut, that, shut down the DMV this time, though. Yeah. So you couldn't I register know. your vehicle just, and everything I else. Read that. This is weird. This was a... I've been trying to read a little bit more into this story. Well, I've been telling people about... I, I, I hope I don't get a knock on the door, but I've been telling people about this for quite the time. What? So like that if... And I heard about this from Chris Roberts, the same that uh, we shot this video. Mm -hmm. the, the video that's on Tom's page about how to break into cybersecurity. Yeah. Me and, uh, 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 me and Chris actually went out to lunch. And we were talking, and we were talking about how, you know, right to repair, blah, blah, blah. And we were talking about nation state attacks. And we got somehow into John Deere tractors and the tractors that actually plant and how 
if you could just infiltrate those systems and you can make things, you know, plant at shallow uh-huh. depths and then, like, you poison entire food systems yeah. and you can kill swaths of people. Well, it looks like somebody's taking that to the next level and they're starting to play around with the idea of these autonomous vehicles and these autonomous farming equipment mm-hmm. being sent on a wild goose chase. Mind you, Chris is the same person that moved the NSA's data center in Utah and got the <laughs> on the door, right? So, like, GPS is interesting because even the, the, the you know, the federal government is using the public channels of GPS. There's right. a public GPS and there's a private government-only GPS. Right. But the government is still only using the public GPS. Mm-hmm. So I asked a, a, a guy who's uh, first. I don't know if I could even talk about how I know him. But uh, he said, <laughs> he says, hey, uh, you know, what, ha- what happens is uh, we assume that when the Russians or, you know, any, you know, threat actors attack, that they'll go after the GPS that they're aware of. And then we shut that off and we use our GPS. Mm-hmm. And so we never lose a step. You get what I mean? We're always a step ahead. But nevertheless. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a couple other things going on here. So... The, the challenge they have, and one of my understandings of this uh, from, I, I, only, I found this story, but I think it's in this one. There's apparently a bunch of uh, sand mining, illegal mining operations being done. Mm. And what they do to throw people off with, you know, blank ship manifests, you know, real black right. stuff, yeah. is they yeah. will spoof the GPS to throw the authorities off as to where their boat really is while mm-hmm. they're doing the mining. So they can't keep an eye on them. Um, apparently, there's a bunch of uh, materials mining that goes on there. So it's kind of a – there's too many people that c- could benefit financially from this yeah. to figure out who's doing yeah, it. So uh, yeah. it becomes part of a mystery, too, because there's some advantages. And uh, I think we covered seven episodes ago, uh, we talked about uh, Putin, that wherever he goes, there's an aura of missing GPSs. <laughs> I and mean, they know he's been doing it wherever he goes before he goes somewhere. For you. Yeah, they spoof all the GPS and make it a little skewed to make him a little bit harder to find, is yeah, the theory. And, you know, too. Russian government's the Russian government. They do the things they do. So they just got him like they transport him in a Faraday cage. <laughs> they just want around with him in a Faraday <laughs> cage. I mean, do you blame him? Right? I don't like, blame him. Who owns the GPS band? Yeah, I don't yeah. blame him. Like, so, we kind of have the jump on a lot of stuff as a country, and people don't yeah. realize that's a public infrastructure that we give the world. Yeah, it's beyond like you know, like we we have a handshake kind of thing where it's like, well, you know, free as in freedom, yeah. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like it's just the, the moment we spoofing. are willing to infringe on your freedoms is the moment at which you may want to pay for your own. Spoofing <laughs> on the high seas. Spoofing on the high seas. Oh, spoofery. Yeah. Is that all we had, guys? Uh, no, I got this one, too. I just forgot to drop it in. Iran's App 33 sharpens focus on industrial control Good systems. Good old APT 33. <laughs> Go for the infrastructure is what they're heading for. Mm-hmm. So not too uh, surprising all this. And we've talked about this a couple of times when there's been attacks. We talked about uh, the Indian um, nuclear plant that had their active directory apparently controlling something nuclear and got popped. It's just like, why is your stuff? Yeah. And anyone I've talked to that works, and I think we at least have one person who may be on the channel that works within the realm of, uh, you know, power grid stuff, will probably face palming right now going, it's just a matter of time for someone pones all this. Like, this yes. stuff is not set up securely. So At all. Yeah. It's... Um, at all. Not going to talk about I'm it. Not going to talk about it, but at all. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, and it always brings up Stuxnet, and a couple of my friends read the book, and I have not read the book on Stuxnet, and uh, they told me the book was amazing. Mm. They said as good as the Dark Knight Diaries episode is, like the book that he read to pull that episode together, the book makes it better. Like okay. they, they, they they did, like I did, they listened to the episode, that this is amazing, and then went further and uh, read the whole book, and they said it's great. I can't remember the name of it, but you can, it's a Stuxnet's book. Um, so I, it's, it's kind of uh, not surprising news that they're going after each other. I mean, we went after them technically first, so mm-hmm. now they're coming back after us. So it's, uh, I don't think any of it's real surprising, but nope. it, it's worth talking about a little bit. We need more cybersecurity people. <laughs> definitely, and definitely in ICS. Yeah, there's a lot. That's all they really had for the news because I've, you know, I, no, no excuses. I get, I always say it's a busy week, but I don't think I have a week that's not busy. <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's been pretty rough. What are we doing next week? Again, next um, week's the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Are we gonna skip that? Um, yeah, 
next week. You are here in next week. I know Thanksgiving. Ooh. Thanksgiving. Are we gonna have a special? Turkey, you can tell how far ahead we episode? actually think. In I, this. I'm triple booked that day, so like I'm I'm yeah. fricked regardless. <laughs> to use Marcus's yeah verbiage, <laughs> I'm, I'm fricked. So, yeah. So know. we may have to you know Black Friday and go enjoy some time with your family. I well, actually maybe we, maybe we do a uh, Gray Saturdays or something. Yeah. <laughs> Since we, um, we can do. Well, I'm up north, north after that. Oh yeah. So nice. Yeah, I'll be up north, uh, so I won't have high speed internet access. So we can. Do it before, do it, whatever. So I'll leave that up to you guys. We'll make a decision. We'll let them know. We'll let you guys know. We'll tweet it out. Maybe we do a midweek. Uh oh, our uh, our good cyber brother. Oh no, yeah, no fin- self dropped a link. The good old Phineas. Oh yeah, yeah. Base. Phineas Fisher's back uh, and telling people to hack the banks. Yeah, and he did hack the sh- and it it did hack the banks. He it, Phineas has been hacking banks. Yeah. So that's uh. Pace been still up, probably. It was, uh, you know, they removed it from Google Docs because Phineas had his manifesto, his, her, its manifesto. I won't make assumptions. Can't. And Not anymore. Nope. No. That's how you get hacked. That's how you get hacked. <laughs> don't get hacked, bro. Yep. So Alcohol wanna... recovery Sunday. Yeah, that happens too. I don't drink as much. I keep trying to drink less. I'm over 40. It's like I was really thinking about this. Like I've had some bad experiences now that I'm over 40 with alcohol. They, they were different when I was young. You bounce back. You don't bounce. You just feel like crap. You're like, I ruined the next day <laughs> when you drink. When you're 40 and get drunk, you just ruined tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there a public key base? Uh, yes. Yeah, ours is public, isn't it? Yeah. yeah we yeah. have a public one and a yeah. private one. Yeah. yeah. We have a public. How they the one have. you hear no self is referring to is the private one. No self is our long lost. Castmate, that, right? He that was, we've been. <laughs> he was that, actually supposed to be <laughs> on the show, live yeah. streamed in. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll work on that. Because maybe we'll Canada, bro. Like this happens. You got to just drive down, bro. Man, he's in Alberta. There's no. There's no just down. drive down from Alberta. I think, oh. or somewhere like. We don't have to go up there. He's not the close Canada. With him, like, like, like we have our close skiing. You gotta be careful. Be careful. Trying to hit the slopes. Yeah, man. Bring my money hat. It's like a three-day drive. Yeah, I've driven to L.A. It's le- legitimately a three-day drive. From yeah, here to sure. Alberta? It's a three-day drive? Yeah. That's the West Coast. He's this is the uh, Motherboard three, article three, three, on no? Offshore Bank targeted by Phineas Fisher. That's a great name, by the way. I just love that. So, uh, Confirms it was hacked. A criminal investigation on going to the King. No, it's the same Bank. dude that hacked the uh, or same person that hacked hacking team, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. They're yeah. A, they, they have the whole manifesto and everything. They've uh, got it in... A whole set of how they do things. I think it's kind of cool. Like, there's a lot, there's kind of a lot to it. So, interesting. Good old Phineas. Good old Phineas. Yes. Uh, hackers with manifestos are scary people. What is they're, yeah. they're on the edge of anarchists, too. Because, like, they, I don't know. It's kind of fun. That's <laughs> a what? I don't know. Uh, no self draw. One more link. That's Hack. basic. That that was uh, Phineas's thing. Oh, his uh, manifesto. Yeah. That's the manifesto. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's the whole uh, oh, DIY, okay. guide. DIY guide to guide rob banks. banks. It go. is also the DIY guide to rob banks and why how they get hacked will never be monetized. <laughs> 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 we need a sponsor. Yeah, it's basically just did it. <laughs> yeah, you can't put that in there. You said the words and now it's part of a Google transcript and now you know. Now we won't get monetized. Well, Please yikes. find a sponsor that will throw money at us, talk and <laughs> bullshit on security. <laughs> you know, it's all right. It's all right, though. We're working on it. We're working on it. It'll work. Well, if you keep throwing you keep throwing data out there, that's what I tell people. Uh, my YouTube channel's getting bigger, but I'm like, people are like, oh, you're really sure to get bigger? I'm like, I got 900 fucking videos. I didn't just come out of <laughs> right, nowhere. Right. I produced 900 videos. <laughs> I'm Ooh. trying to brute force the algorithm, guys. <laughs> I haven't made a video in a month. Uh, Life comes at you fast. Yeah. It's like a three-day drive. Yeah. I don't know, man. It depends on... If you drive the Tesla, take a little longer and stop and charge it. But there's uh, superchargers all through Canada. You can get all the way up to Canada and everything. They got superchargers Mm. everywhere there. I'm just waiting on that cyber... Got cyber truck. You can go further. There's 500 miles between superchargers. Man, I need that now. You guys in this cyber truck. Cyber I truck. I don't know. Yeah, brute force in YouTube. That's what I'm doing, man. I'm just like cranking content. You got to put together a good content. You just can't oh, upload 900 videos. Oh, shit. I got to check that <laughs> out. Not good on Macy's. Macy's got breached. What? Macy's got hacked. Did they drop a link? 
So look it up yes. real quick. Yes. Okay. Oh, just Thank in you. time for Christmas. Who put that in there? Looks like it was October. Jim Cola, thanks. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was just, oh, three days ago. Yeah. Major retailer Macy's hacked. Popular retailer Macy's been hacked. The company provided notice of breach in a letter. Yeah. Womp womp. Hmm. Ooh. Mage cart, huh? Is that what it was? A good old mage cart? Look like it. Check out my wallet pages. Yeah. To take credit card data. Mage cart. Watch out for the ads this time of year. It's, it's worth ad blocking. Just watch out, period, this time of year. I did a video on PF Blocker. It's quite popular. There you go. You know, so it show you how to see. Or Pi Hole. I got a video on Pi Hole. Either yeah. one of those. Or ad, you can just run Ad Block Plus. Ad Block Plus. You can run all of them. Yeah. Just, you, it's like defense in depth. You yep. want ad block or U block origin, mm -hmm. and then you load up some uh, pie hole or PF block. Just know that when you do this type of stuff, when you go to go book travel or any of that kind of shit, it blocks you. Yeah. Like I can't shop on Delta. I can't do Google flights. I can't do any of that stuff because it, they're relying on tracking you around mm -hmm. to yep. price you. Yeah. And when you throw throw them off, they just go access denied until you turn the shit off. And then they're like, yeah. come shop with us. So. <laughs> Just beware, because I was one of those guys like, what the, f like, I'm, like, I'm losing out on my flights, like, the price is going up, like, what's going on? <laughs> like, like, why can't I work? It's a problem, the yeah. problem's real. So, so. Yeah, if they can't track you, they can't give you a deal. Just know the obfuscation no, they can't comes with all charge you, you or, book it at five nineteen, and it's $600, you book it at five. Oh, no, they still figure that out. And it's They figure that out, that's just based on demand, they're not even tripping on who it is. They don't care who, they just know it's a what. Yeah, that's true. Oh, anyway, yeah. good mage card. Well, we'll, we'll ramble. Mike, yeah, Michael says uh, he ordered a coat from Macy's with a CC, but uh, the breach was found on October 15th, so it depends on when you ordered it. So something like once they found the breach, they probably closed it. Um, so they did the disclosure today, but I guess it's if you ordered before October 15th um, would be the problem of this year. So Plus it's a CC, bro. You're good to go. Yeah, if it's a CC, you're good. Uh, CCs are good to go, man. I don't, I'll give you my CC number because then I'll just call in and be like, hey, it wasn't me. And then I'll be like, yeah, it wasn't you. You don't do that. Man, thank yeah. you. Done. There you go. I don't shop at Macy's. Done. Give the gift to pie holy relatives. Oh, no. Oh. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that because when it doesn't work. Exactly. Just, I was just going to say that. When you. it doesn't work, they're going to be calling so, you. Uh, on one of my one of my staff did that for his parents, and exactly that happened. He had to turn it off. Yeah. You know, he put it on there, and it turns out his mom, you know, older, and she loves her clicker games. And oh, the clicker yeah. games, if you work. if there's an ad block, they quit. So. Yep. <laughs> whatever gleam, whatever clicker game she kept on to play wouldn't load no more. And she's like, Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> come fix this. <laughs> my clicker game ain't working. Yeah, game. <laughs> it's a challenge. Good clicker game. Mm -hmm. My clickers. Uh, PIA VPN buyout. We actually talked a little bit about that before the show. I mean, it's kind of a... These VPN companies buy each other. Uh, I think VPN can be overstated at times. I'm not... I, I, I'm you're, only as safe as your, you're only as safe as your VPN provider. It's yeah. Like right. Do you really trust any of them? Do you need to? I, Bro, I, it's the freaking <clears throat> internet. Like, the NSA has it all already. Like, it's yeah. called PRISM. We... You know, NROL, like, go look up this stuff. Like, they're grabbing so many communications. That it's just like, it's over. Like, stop. Just don't do bad stuff, okay? Like, you know, obfuscate for advertisers and marketing, right. but not to stay away from the federal police. Right. <laughs> right? Like, the FBI has you regardless. Like, they had you before. I mean, if you're being honest, the only thing VPNs are good for advertising is, and marketing. Well, yeah, advertising and marketing, Getting and if you're and networks. if you're downloading some torrents or some movies, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. it. That type of stuff. They're not really anything that I consider opsec. No, no, it's not opsec. No, no. When you want to do opsec, is when you've pwned five hundred thousand X clouds and you're just using those as your proxy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so literally, that's your opsec. Yeah. You're like, yeah, every other request came from a different IP address all over the world. Looks like all of those IP addresses were implicated in the next cloud breach. Yeah. Every, everyone is interested in your uh, your device you're using. Why don't you verbally tell them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, it is an iPhone 66. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I have been experimenting with a multitude of form factors. I have a MacBook. I have an iPad 13-inch. This is my iPad, well, iPad Pro 13-inch. This is my iPad Pro 11-inch cellular. I have... Um, a ThinkPad X1 Carbon. I have a ThinkPad uh, W530. Um, so I, I have a lot of different form factors. They all run different OSs. 
Um, the iPad OS has made this thing like amazing. Mm-hmm. I actually have, so for one, it's USB C, right? Um, for two, as you can see right here, I have like a keyboard, right? Yeah. And what I can do is uh, just use this as like a, a regular laptop. Um, it's amazing. I like it. So I got a mouse, a keyboard, because since the new iPad OS actually has like a mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could do RDP on here, um, so like any remote servers that I want to use, I can go full screen RDP. Um, the new pencil is magnetic, so it just sticks on there, and that's how it actually syncs. 120 hertz refresh on the screen. Uh, it's got like one hell of a processor in it. Battery lasts for a multitude of days. Uh, can you hook up an external to this? I can hook up an external to it. My new favorite thing to do, which I'm going to make a video uh, on it, is my companion device, which is... You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Wi Fi connected Raspberry Pi Ah. with file system and all that funness. So I'm going to show you guys how we play around. Didn't we hook the Raspberry Pi? No, we put the Pi 4 is awesome. The The Pi 4 is amazing. So I love the Pi 4. I want to be showing people, you know what I'm saying? Um, (laughs) the, the, The X1 Extreme I haven't played with. Uh, the X1 Carbon is really, really nice, uh, so I, I don't have really an opinion on one versus the other, Fendrix. Um, but I can tell you that the X1 Carbon is one of those computers that um, has a touchscreen, a fingerprint scanner, USB-C, a battery life of like 24 hours, and <laughs> like it's not a bad computer. It's all solid state. It doesn't have a fan. You can drop it from like the 40th floor, 40th floor and it still works, it seems. Um, but back to this iPad, I like this iPad a lot. One of my experiments is to do all of my work, run my entire business off of my iPad. I've been doing that for the last month. It's been working for you? It actually works. It's a laptop replacement. It's cellular enabled. I got my video games right here. I got my iCloud right here. Um, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. The, the, the keyboard that you guys see attached to it is actually made out of solid aluminum. So that- Oh, so like it's like I actually that, that looks yeah. really solid. Oh, it's solid. I thought I saw this plastic. Solid, that is solid nice. aluminum. Um, it's made by a company called Bridge, B R Y D G E. Um, I don't have a link for you guys because I don't have a referral, so you gonna have to go do it yourself. Um. <laughs> but yes, that is. Uh, you guys will probably see me next week with something different, like the X One, or you may see me with. The ThinkPad, which has the nice screen protector that these guys keep referring to. My, the ThinkPad is one of my favorites. It has two drives, both solid state. One runs Kali, the other runs Ubuntu 18 LTS. Um, uh, you know, the only thing I don't like about that computer is that the screen is a 700 by 900 resolution. That's a weird. It's a really, really weird situation. Yeah. Um, but it I, looks good though. Like once, the I, quality. once I get it to like 1080p, oh, I'm talking about the ThinkPad. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, this is 4K. Okay, I thought that was higher. Oh, this is 4K. That's nice. But yeah, that's life. That's life. I like it. Also, I can extend my uh, MacBook screen to this. So if I'm doing presentations like we saw, mm-hmm. you know, oh. I'm doing a presentation like we want to do the file this malware talk. Yeah. I can control my MacBook screen, which I could put in front of you right here for my iPad. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if I'm doing a presentation yep, for yep, some people, right. I could just go bloop and this and this and this and bloop and that and that and bloop from right here remote. We should still do that, even if we jump on a live stream together, like we did for the one uh, PF Sense one. Do mm-hmm. a, do the file of Smart. Like I do some Q and A with you. To, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. All right. I like that talk. That was a good talk. I wish it was recorded. It happens. Things happen. It happens. So, <laughs> I got another. I got another talk coming up. Um, I have a lot of cool stuff going on right now in life. Uh, I have a talk coming up in February that I've I was requested to speak at. Um, I just joined the advisory board for Detroit Public Schools Community District uh, Westside Academy IT and Cybersecurity. So I'll be on an ad board for a high school, uh, helping them um, with their their high school students. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the business is growing, so I've been having some fun and staying busy and eh, yeah, knocking out some work. So you told him he just needed to do that. Once you took that leap, it just starts falling into place. Now he's got to get some YouTube content going. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube content is hard. There's a lot it of is. statement of works, and there's some video games in there. Yeah. I know people want to see me do the OSCP. I've just been busy. I don't really got the mental capacity for it right now. I don't want to burn out. So. Hmm. Yeah, that happens. I, I I think last Sunday I took off. Like yeah. I did mentally. Bur- I was I was at home, but mentally I wasn't anywhere. Yeah, burnout <laughs> is real. I was on the couch. <laughs> 
You got to do that once in a while. That's the same thing after, like, next week. I'll be up north. Same yeah. thing. Go visit my cousin and hang out. And Ain't nothing going on up there. Ain't no like, activity, so you're just kind of doing nothing. <laughs> they go shooting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's things to do with it. Nothing technology related. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. We're going off-roading in the Jeeps and stuff like that. Nice. So. Uh, Michael asked you what site, uh, what's that site that you use to test your firewall? Oh, the Test My IDS? Mm. So it is uh, Test... My idea. Some of you guys seen it's kind of funny. There we go. I'll pull it up on the big screen here. So you go here to uh, testmyids.com, and all it does is throw that on there. And what this does, and it's doing it right now, is Sericata goes, wait a minute, this looks like some type of privilege escalation, so it gets flagged in Sericata. It's testmyids.com. It doesn't really do anything. It's just a text file. Um, and you can check... Uh, you can just curl against it or whatever, and you can see how your IDS system behaves against it and see if it flags it. Okay. That's all. It's nothing nothing really big for testing. The The thing I'm actually working on, if you're referring to what I talked about in my live stream, is uh, iMix traffic. Uh, that's a different type of firewall test that I'm going to I have to set up a server that runs iMix. Uh, there's an open source tool called T-Rex. Oddly, it's open source, and I believe Cisco supported. Um, it creates noise for firewalls, so you can do uh, mixed traffic, iMix traffic testing. Um, so all well, this sounds like to me as a red teamer is figure out how to obf- obfuscate my traffic enough for my ID- the IDS to never go off in my test system. Yeah, well, yeah, it's so that when yeah. I go on the client side, I could just like throw shells around, be as loud as I want. IDS is like, well, yeah, <laughs> as as it's been in, it's been encrypted it, seventeen different ways. Right, it, it went through it just, DNS, then it went through <clears throat> TLS, then it went through SSH, then it went through DNS again, then it was TLS again. Well, related, <laughs> and why this is mounted in here, this is all part of it. And this is probably tomorrow or even Sunday's project. Is this is uh, currently set up for bridging? Okay. So it operates on these ports, but then these ports are bridged, and it's transparent bridging. What transparent bridging is blue team because we're looking for red team, mm-hmm. and red team is wanting to know if their their noise is being noticed. Mm-hmm. If you transparent bridge, they can't tell because I have no states. Uh, that you can see. I've got no IPs in the same range. I'm doing it all at layer two, so I'm just sniffing traffic, but I can actually enact rules and block things. Okay. So the firewall keeps active states. It causes PF Sense to act as a switch, but with also Snort or Sericata. And I can use Snort rules because uh, they're a little bit more advanced because they have application ID and start IDing what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's completely transparent, as in the red team has no idea I'm watching. So uh, it's kind of counterintelligent. Okay, stuff. so this is and this is why people get frustrated to make ransomware, right. because like before we could just move ladders, so they were just like, you know what, fuck that. I know that they're going to click the link. I'm just going to encrypt everything. Right. Even if I just encrypt that one computer, I'm just like punching the sysadmin yeah. back. Like, <laughs> your blue team was too good, so I encrypted Drive. Yes. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. It's all back and forth. I'm gonna do. Um, I talked about it in my live stream, and a few people said, how'd you do that, and wanted me to dig deeper. So I'm going to do, uh, I realize, I don't think anyone has any videos on transparent bridging with IDS. So, and it's, and, and as what drives any of my videos is partly audience, and the other side of it is, now that I got paid on the gig, I don't know if they watched me on this channel or not. Thank you for those of you that hired me and paid me. A company paid me uh, their con- on consulting on how to do this. Okay. Which means, now that I got paid, I've already done the work. Yeah. So now I'm going to do a video on it. And actually, one guy was happy I did that. He realized the video I did was a, you know, it doesn't, because I don't have to drop the company name. All I did was tell people how to configure something. Mm-hmm. He paid me for the configuration. I did a whole video on it after I got paid, but I also did the configuration for them. And they're mm-hmm. like, cool. The video, he even said the video is like a reference if I ever have to set this up again. I'm like, yep, have it. And now the world can have it. So um, I do that sometimes. So transparent bridging with IDS. That's uh, be the title. We have another question from Zach Hilbrandt. He said, where is the best lab for learning both hacking and OPSEC? No self-answer. Well, do they, do they really no. teach OPSEC, though? No, nobody teaches yeah, no, OPSEC. That's, I think that's, what I, why, that's why oh, okay. I asked the question, mm-hmm. so I can let them know that no one really teaches OPSEC. You really just have to. You learn OPSEC <sighs> from committing felonies and getting scared. That. Right. Do you know what though? I'm going to be <laughs> yo. Yes. <laughs> like how would I track me? I think <laughs> that's a good a good answer. Oh, Start. Shit. If I you were tracking I, yourself, I enter. Now I'm in trouble. If you were tracking you, what would you stop? 
Well, I think um, something I'm going to have a conversation with is because they're interested in talking about this and we're going to have a deeper conversation. I'll probably turn to some content for my channel. Um, people that work for the NSA. Mm -hmm. I know three. They're former NSA people. They have excellent OPSEC. And they're surprised how the community, but they, they trained in the NSA. They can't exactly say, well, listen to the NSA. Yeah. <laughs> You'll learn a lot. Um, but I think there's some stuff we can talk about that I can probably get out of them of like good security posturing, uh, behaviors you can adopt and things like that. So there's probably, I there's mean, not an easy way to do it. You're right. I there's think not. these people just need like regular OPSEC for like using, you're not like <laughs> checking no, but I, I still think if you, if you take it to the extreme, someone uh -huh. who's gone through that and you take tidbits from it, even if you're not going to follow NSA procedure here, <laughs> you can get an idea of how far you can go living in a Faraday cage or just some good general ideas. And even stuff we've talked about here over and all, like what do we do? We encrypt messages. You allow them to expire. Because think about this. Think about information that you create. Uh, it's always before the electronic age. Mm -hmm. It's always been ephemeral and not believable and things like that. It's always just fell out into the air. Someone said something and everything became hearsay after mm -hmm. that. Well, now we start creating permanent records of everything. And do you need to? Well, if there's the option, and it's what some of these security tools do, like uh, Keybase or Signal, they have you the option to delete it. You don't have to have, uh, like, Facebook Messenger. The default for Facebook Messenger, like that message Forever. you sent to that girl in 2009, yeah, it's still there in 2019, dude. You just got to, when she messaged you, like, oh, look, that's... <laughs> yeah, literally, it's still there. So... You know, you think about that now, and you start that alone will greatly increase the uh, your, your threat exposure goes down. So there's little things you can do like that. That's true. What, what you're passing around. True. Um, yeah, there's probably some way we can make it a short list though. Yeah, yeah. But that list is ever moving because what I say today was like, there's a new threat tomorrow. You got to like avoid. <laughs> That's tech for you. <laughs> do you have a cell phone? <laughs> Yeah. If you're not willing to live life like Richard Stallman or beyond, then like you're not ready for operational security. Like yeah. you really, really got to think about what are what are my goals? Are my goals to be harder to track for advertisement that is relevant to me? Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's one of my biggest goals for operational security. I don't want people to target me for certain ads. Um, I don't want certain agencies to be able to see precisely what I do for like my living mm -hmm. and for like my research because the number one people to hack are hackers if you want exploits. So if I'm out and I tweet that I'm researching on this new thing in Confluence or, you know, some agency know that I've done Confluence research before, they're kind of more interested in seeing, oh, well, we have this target that's been using Confluence and we're trying to figure out how to get, get in there. Let's go penetrate Xavier real quick and just go grab a split from him. Let's see what he's been working on. Um, that That's my level of operational security. But if you're running, like, you know, a dogfighting website, then, like, Bro, like, for one, I can't help you. For two, <laughs> right, because like, I'm not about to get caught up in your nonsense. But for two, like, there's so much more that you got to do than me. <laughs> right. Like, and I'm a hacker, you know? Yeah, there's there's a lot of different things. That, you know, what, what you want to expose about yourself. I always think about this, and I've talked about this in, like, my uh, Protecting the Digital You. And some of that is some OPSEC stuff uh, that I cover in there. But it's I always think when you're online, and Xavier pointed this out too, like, you're controlling the narrative about you. And if you don't put anything online about yourself, they'll dig trouble. deeper to find it. So you almost want to put a placeholder so someone can't become you easily. Like there's enough information if you, you'll find Xavier on Facebook, but he's controlling the narrative. You find a lot of dog pictures though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got dogs got more followers than him. Dogs got more followers. <laughs> I'm gonna start using that uh, website we talked about earlier to put in my bio. You know, yeah. I want to just put a couple key points and let it fill in the rest. Yeah, let it fill it in. So <laughs> just make just... up a whole story about me. That's yeah. not true. That'd be fun. <laughs> Create a person. Oh, yes. boy. Yeah. That's what TEP does. Yeah. Yeah, there's that, too. There's different There's different obfuscation <laughs> messages. I'm having a hard time talking today. <laughs> it's all that hot sauce we eat for the show. <laughs> Man, oh, my God. I don't even. Yeah. Whew. It was hot. Do we have any movie recommendations? Ooh. We... I've fallen off of the movie. I haven't even really taken in. Rick and Morty. I watched it. There's two episodes out. I missed the... it still. I know they just premiered the new season. It's good. I haven't seen. It's good. <laughs> it's he's got his friend. It says, it says uh, he tattooed on his uh, servant's head. Says don't develop my app. And the servant just runs around. He's an intern. Mm -hmm. We develop my app. We develop my app. Or he just keeps asking him. And it says why is it tattooed not those? He goes don't develop his app. <laughs> like it <was> just. <laughs> uh, Let me so. see. Can I even think of a movie? Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. I've heard that is an 
awesome, awesome movie. Like it's a thirty oh, million a opening day. Four versus Ferrari. That's a movie. Yeah, it's got uh, well actually, uh, let's pull it up. It's got like Matt Damon or anything. What? Or not. No, no, I am terrible with this movie shit. This must be one it. of those movies that they like made in private and just put in a theater because it's nothing else to watch. No, everyone said people said this is like. Oh, this is the original story. Yeah, it's all about how Ford oh, from Le Mans. With Bill. I mean, they got a ninety-two percent Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I don't go by Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's you not should. the best. No, you shouldn't. You should. It's no. well received. You should just, you should just watch it and form your own opinion. I wouldn't uh, even go yeah, off a suggestion from Rotten Tomatoes because they they have gotten a lot of. Hold on, uh, is this fair usage? Yeah, it's a trailer. They don't they don't buy you a trailer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know the rules, dog. <laughs> People out here getting raided by the FBI for streaming. Like, is this the is this is a delayed stream? I ain't trying to get my dog fragged. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now she blind and deaf all over some damn ad. But uh, I've heard it's good. The filming's good. The acting's good. It's uh, based on the true story of how Ford came, how Ford built the GT and everything else. So, uh, and there's people that did the you know fact versus a fiction, what they got right and wrong. Either way, I'm interested in seeing it. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm a car enthusiast, so I think the history. I've been in a Ford GT, the original one. Hmm. It's a badass car. So it's uh, the story behind it is pretty cool too. Blah 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 blah. A lot of 3 a.m. open header nights to get the Ford GT. Some, yes. some poor neighbor. <laughs> yeah, and it's a story. So Ford tried to buy Ferrari. That's part of the history of this. And uh, Ferrari used that offer uh, Ford had to prove their market value to sell to someone else. That's how Ford didn't buy Ferrari. Mm. So then Ford went head-to-head, -head, competed with them in a the racetrack. And beat the shit out of them. Mm. Yeah. And oh, yeah, because like you got to, because you're Ford. Mm -hmm. It's Ferrari. Yeah, Ferrari's it became kind Ferrari. of a... You know, so there's a the whole history, and they got good actors playing it. So you know, they portray the parts. I'm Just sure imagine it's embellished. You pull up to the guy next to the Ferrari, and you're like, "Yeah, man, you got a Ferrari, but I got a Ford." And you're like, "Yeah, man, but you got a Ford, and I got a Ferrari." Like it's kind of like we don't care that you won the Le Mans one. Like it's a Ferrari now. <laughs> like the cheapest Ferrari is better than the cheapest Ford. Yeah, there's, um, oh, also, uh, well, it'll be our next movie recommendation. I think in December, The Expanse drops, the new one. I love The Expanse. That is some good sci-fi. Really good. I've enjoyed that, the new version. But oh, we'll talk about that when it comes out. I'm going to binge it. I think that's it. I think, oh. We came it all to the end now. I don't know. We got anything else? <laughs> I think that's it. Yo, boys, I'm here talking that zero zero one talk. <laughs> that sounds like some illegal shit. No self billions, dude. I cannot wait for another season of billions. I'm I'm all in on billions. If you guys haven't seen that, I still haven't seen it. Oh, good, good, good. Bobby Axelrod, definitely good shit. Oh, in uh, Silicon Valley, so that's good. The last season. I need some new shows to binge. I really haven't been into TV lately. Just getting prepped for. See, you know. yeah, yeah, prep for all that stuff too. So, I don't know how I find time to watch them. So, I just binge them though. I was like, I'll find a five hour block and I'll watch five episodes of something. I got like <laughs> really, really, really bad ADD. Like, really, really bad. Like, bad. Like, bad. Like, I can't watch movies, I can't watch TV like that. That's not my, th that's not my, yeah. that's not my zone out place. That's where computers are for me. That's where I have three screens. The way I do because like I can have this YouTube thing running over here, yeah, yeah. this thing over here, and then like work in the middle, and I can bounce over to YouTube and watch a little bit of this shoot, you know, this Facebook, and then bounce I back mean, over to the middle screen and do something. That's some how work. I do. I got like two computer screens and my TV and then my cell phone. Exactly. So I'm like watching a movie, so doing I, two things on the internet, and then playing Call of Duty. See, I can't YouTube watch my a, phone. I can't watch a movie like that though. I'm doing all four things. I, I can't watch a movie though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that shit gonna suck me in. Yep. All right. Well, that's the end of it. We're going to press the button. I think that's it, people. I think that's it, people. Thank Anything you else for, for the joining good class? us once again. It's another episode of How, you got, how They Got Hacked. Yep. Uh, less TV, do more school? Yeah. Not on that dinky iPad. <laughs> <laughs> that's just one more screen in front of Xavier. That's just that's his portable it's, one. It's so interesting because people don't realize, like, I literally can connect to a Kali Linux server from right here. Mm hmm and make life hell for any season. You, you see the sticker we can on the laptop? The sticker on the laptop says, if you can't see it, it says, my other computer is under the desk of your CEO. 
So that that's that's where I that's where I I'll leave that this. That's where I'll leave this. So. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Later. All right. Ready to press All right, button. people. See you later. Later. Peace.